Hello everyone. Today, my topic, uh, we, uh, we, what we will discuss about anti-anginal drug. My topic is anti-anginal drug. In this lecture, we will discuss about the introduction part of the anti-anginal drugs, classification of anti-anginal drugs and the mechanism of actions of uh, different anti-anginal drugs. So, uh, we will discuss first, we will move to the introduction part of the anti-anginal drugs. So, as its name shows, anti-anginal drugs means anti means opposite. So, the drugs which are used to prevent or abort the action of angina are known as anti-anginal drugs. So, uh, first of all to discuss about anti-anginal drugs or to understand about anti-anginal drug, we need to understand about angina. What is exactly angina is? If uh, we will discuss angina in layman language, we can say that angina is a chest pain or the pain which is occurring in the chest and um, uh, and, pa uh, and uh, moving uh, to, to the sh left shoulder and down to the arm. So, in the layman language, we s can say the pain which is uh, occurring in the chest is angina, but, uh, but if we want uh, to discuss it in more precise way, how we can say the angina or we call it angina pectoris, it is the principal system, symptom of ischemic heart disease which is characterized by severe constricting pain in the chest which is radiating from the precardium to the left shoulder and down to the arm. So, I am repeating angina pectoris is a symptom. What symptom? Of the ischemic heart disease and what is ischemic heart disease or what is ischemia? Ischemia is um, like insufficiency of the oxygen means uh, your uh, oxygen demand is not equal to your oxygen supply and means your oxygen demand is high and your your no, uh, heart is not getting enough oxygen. So, that is ischemia. So, angina is a symptom of ischemic heart disease which is characterized by severe constricting pain in the chest radiating from the precordium to the left shoulder and down to the arm. Okay. Now, this is clear what is angina. Now, what are the drugs which are used to treat angina are known as anti-anginal drugs. Right? Uh, moving to the next slide. So, like the uh, there are various types of angina also. There are three types of angina that is typical angina or stable angina, unstable angina and variant and prismental angina. Okay. So, these two typical angina and unstable angina, uh, this is a resultant of uh, atherosclerosis. Uh, the term here I have used atherosclerosis. So, what is atherosclerosis? Atherosclerosis is deposition of fat like substances in the arteries and veins, which causes hindrance to flow the blood is known as atherosclerosis. For example, if I want to explain this more and more, we can explain it more and more. Like uh, we are having a pipe of water okay, and water is continuously flowing in the uh, pipe. And if we, uh, if there is any obstruction in the pipe, the flow of water get reduced right? and uh, this is all uh, the principle of atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis mein kya ho hai? Ki there is a pipe there is a arteries and veins in which the uh, progressive decrease in the vessel radius, radius. Why it is occurring? Because there is a deposition of fat. So, atherosclerosis is deposition of fat in the arteries or veins which leads to impaired coronary blood flow. Okay. So, it occurs when myocardial demand increases as in exertion, as in exercise and um, as in exercise or some emotional factors or due to some stress factors. So, this is known as typical stable angina and in unstable angina in this oxygen demand does not increase, but the blood flow reduces why due to coronary thrombosis. So, this is the uh, main difference between typical angina or stable angina and unstable angina. right? And uh, the third is third part is variantal prismental angina or 
variant enzyme or we call it principal enzyme. In this, no atherosclerosis is forming, means there is nothing to do with deposition of fat. So, why pain is occurring? The pain is occurring due to reduced blood flow. And why the blood flow has reduced? Because there is abruptly, uh, there is a redu reduction, um, blood flow reduction due to vasospasm. So, uh, in stable and unstable angina, the atherosclerosis ki wajay se problem hota hai, but prismental angina ke andar, there is no, um, uh, it do not, so in this oxygen demand does not increase, but blood flow reduces due to vasospasm. Okay. So, these are three types of angina, uh, typical stable angina, unstable angina and variant prismental angina. Next. So, if we want to treat angina, if we want to prevent angina, so what should be our motive, ki us dr how that uh, drug should work. So, the principal goal in the prevention and relief of angina is to limit the oxygen requirement to the heart. So, that the amount of blood supplied by stenosed arteries, arteries is adequate. So, what we have to do? We, uh, we have to dilate the vessel or we have to uh, meet the oxygen re requirement or to the heart. So, this should be the goal for the anti anginal drug or this is the uh, principle which we should take in mind uh, before designing the drug. Okay? So, next is treatment of angina pectoris or we call angina. So, we call kaun se treatment hum, uh, angina pectoris mein currently hum use, use ho rahe So, there are drugs which is used in angina pectoris is vasodilators, I, uh, I have explained it uh, which dilates the vessel, cardiac, it, it includes two classes nitrates and calcium blockers, cardiac de, uh, depressant which again classified into calcium channel blockers and beta blockers and some other drugs which um, alters or which modifies the metabolism and rate inhibitors. So, these are the line of action for the angina pectoris. Now, we are moving towards the classification. So, how do we classify anti anginal drugs? So, there are uh, so many classes depending upon their chemical structure. The first class is nitrates. Uh, nitrates further we can classify into short acting and long acting. The example of short acting nitrate is glycerol trinitrite nitrate and in long acting the examples are isosorbide dinitrate uh, oral root say and isosorbide mononitrate erythritol tetranitrate penta erythrol tetranitrate. So, these are the examples of nitrates class of nitrates. So, the second class of anti anginal drugs are beta blockers. The examples of beta blockers are propanolol, metoprolol, atinolol and some other examples are also there. Right now, I am just classifying, uh, I am dictating the drugs and uh, the, the classes and their examples. Later on, we will discuss about the structure and mechanism of the action of the for each class. So, the next is beta blocker uh, and the third class is calcium channel blockers. The examples of calcium channel, uh, these calcium channel blockers are further cl uh, classified into three classes that is phenyl alkylamine and the example of this um, class is subclasses verapamil. The next is benzothiazepine and the example uh, is diltiazem and the third class is dihydropyridine and the examples are nifidipine, phalodipine, amlodipine, nitrindipine, nimodipine lercanidipine and so on. Bohat sari examples are calcium channel blocker ke, but I have summarized someone, some uh, calcium channel, I am repeating calcium channel blockers, we uh, can classify, sub classify them according to their chemical structure into phenylalkylamine, benzothiazepine, dihydropyridine and the examples are verapamil, diltiazem, nifidipine, phalodipine, etcetera respectively. The fourth class is potassium channel opener. This potassium channel opener, the example is, example is Nico Rental. And the last is miscellaneous, we can call miscellaneous classes or other classes in which there is no structural similarities, we put in some other classes or miscellaneous classes. The examples are dipyridamol, ranolazine, uh, ranolazine I, ivabredine, oxyphendrine. 
So, these are the some examples of some other classes which do not belong to nitrates, beta blockers, calcium channel blockers and potassium channel openers. So, uh, we can classify antianginal drugs into five classes. First is nitrate, second is beta blocker, third is calcium channel blocker, fourth is potassium channel op openers and fifth is uh, miscellaneous or we call it others. Now, we will discuss each class one by one. Okay. So, first, uh, first class was nitrates or these are known as uh, short nitrates which are short acting. The example is glycerol trinitrate or we can call it nitroglycerin. We can see here that this is a if instead of nitro uh, NO2, if instead of NO2, here if hydrogen atom was there, it will it would have been glycerol. So, that is why in this structure you can see this uh, glycerol, the hydrogen atom, each hydrogen atom has been replaced by nitro group okay? and there is three nitro group 1, 2 and 3. So, three nitro group and glycerol. So, the term the uh, name is given glyceryl trinitrate. Glyceryl tri yani 3 nitrate yani nitro group. So, this is known as glyceryl trinitrate. Okay. This is uh, very important class. These are the esters of simple alcohols and polyols with nitric acid. This, anti, uh, this class, the nitrate class has been developed after antianginal effect of amyl nitrite. And what is amyl nitrite? It is the ester of amyl alcohol with uh, nitrous acid and it was developed in 1857. Nowadays, now till now, nowadays five modern classes are still there in use, right. And um, due to, as these are ester, uh, these are esters of simple alcohols and uh, polyols or uh, with nitric acid or acid, the chemical nature of these molecules are acid faces some problems, faces some problems in formulations for clinical use. Some lipophilic ester character makes them volatile which further decreases their therapeutic activity. And again uh, as uh, they are esters, so it should be moisture should be avoided uh, during storage to minimize the hydrolysis of the ester bond. Otherwise, it will lead to the decrease, decrease in the therapeutic effectiveness of the drug. So, this glycerol trinitrate or uh, nitroglycerin or nitroglycerol that is glycerol in which hydrogen atom of all the three hydro hydrogen atom groups are replaced by nitro groups. These are replaced by nitro groups. Okay, next, I think I made myself clear about glycerol trinitrate. Okay, the next uh, class, uh, the subclass of nitrate, short acting and long acting. Short acting in short acting, we have discussed about uh, glycerol trinitrate. In long acting, uh, there is an example isosorbide dinitrate, erythritol tetranitrate, and pentaerythritol tetranitrate. So here, uh, this again. Isosorbide dinitrate, if we take it as a oral route, it is long acting in nature. A isosorbide dinitrate is the, uh, it is basically the nitrate ester and glucitol derivative. In this, what happens? In this, what happens? There is a uh, sorbitol in which the hydrogen uh, dehydration, intermolecular dehydration takes place and ring closure will take place and after that nitration, nitration reaction will occur and then NO2 group will get inserted into this. So, isosorbide dinitrate is a uh, nit nitrate ester and glucitol derivative. Then erythrile tetranitrate, here also you can see erythritol is nitrated. Erythritol ka jo hydrogen atom hai, it get converted into the nitro group. So, erythritol tetranitrate, tetra means 4, nitrate means nitro group. So, when there is 4 nitro group attached to the erythritol, then it is known as erythritol tetranitrate. The next uh, is 
penta erythritol tetranitrate. Here you can see uh, this carbon is all occupied, all substituted. Here the tetranitrate group 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 nitrate groups are there, penta erythritol tetranitrate. It, it is all substituted with nitrate and it is known as penta erythrotyl tetranitrate. So, these are the some examples of some example and structures of uh, long acting nitrates. Next, jo second category 3, the second category was the beta blockers. Uh, the examples of beta blockers is propranolol and metoprolol. Okay. Here in the metoprolol and propranolol, uh, propranolol here propane group is there in which amino ethyl amine group has been attached right and same in the metho uh, metoprolol these are the structures reflecting the beta blockers propranolol and metoprolol next is next category is calcium channel blocker the first category or class was uh, phenylalkylamine benzothiazepine and dihydropyridine phenylalkylamine you can see uh, here there are two aromatic rings okay and these two aromatic rings are get attached with the flexible side uh, flexible chain linear chain uh, which contains the nitride or nitro uh, nitrogen atom in it so this is the basic structure of the phenylalkylamine or verapamil two hydrogen atom uh, two sorry two aromatic atoms which are attached through a flexible linear chain phenyl uh, example is Verapamil. Next category is benzothiazepine derivatives. So, this example is diltiazem. Benzothiazepine uh, jo derivatives hota hai, as its name shows benzo, benzene, thia means sulfur, aza means nitrogen. Right? So, the structure which contains sulfur as well as nitrogen and benzene. So, here benzene sulfur, nitrogen and azepine. So, this uh, this is benzothiazepine derivatives and example is diltiazem. And the third class, uh, third subclass is dihydropyridines. This dihydropyridines, you can see the structure dihydropyridine, uh, it is a subgroup. Dihydropyridine is basically a subgroup in which dihydropyridine is present, this, this structure dihydropyridine with this pyrimidine ring is there right which is substituted like here it is uh, numbering 1 2 3 4 5 6 so everything the uh, some groups are attached over here and amlodipine this is modification some modification is uh, done on nifedipine structure and other uh, structures to form newer drugs right Next is potassium channel opener. The potassium channel opener, the example is Nicorandel and uh, others. Okay, and then uh, we have discussed about dipyridamol. So, uh, these are the examples of potassium channel opener. Potassium channel opener, the example is Nicorandel, and in others category, we have discussed about dipyridamol. Okay. So, uh, now we will discuss about the mechanism of action of each class. The first uh, class we have discussed about nitrates. So, what is, the, what is the mechanism of action, how they do work? So, nitrates this which is present in the smooth, uh, smooth muscle cells, they get denitrated in the smooth muscles, nitrates get denitrated in the smooth muscle and releases the nitric oxide. Now, what is doing nitric oxide what is doing it this nitric oxide this nitric oxide ha, uh, helps um, to convert gt uh, with uh, activates the guanyl cyclase which increases the concentration of cyclic gmp cgmp ki this uh, will increase the concentration of cgmp now what will this do cgmp actually promotes or stimulates the conversion of myosin light chi uh, chain phosphate to myosin light chain if if it is get not converted into my myosin light chain this myosin light chain uh, phosphate um, combines with actin and after uh, 
combines with actin actin myosin complex will form and it will co form contraction but nitrates what does nitrates do nitrate uh, stimulates or promotes guanyl cyclase uh, so that gtp get converted into cgmp the concentration of cgmp uh, increases and myosin light chain phosphate get converted into myosin light chain and thus it will not be able to bind with the actin and thus no contraction is there and thus relaxation uh, there is a relaxation of the blood vessels and there is veno dilation arterial dilation and dilation of coronary vessels so it is very important mechanism because uh, uh, besides ki bahut sare advances aa gaye hain our first choice of drug for the angina are nitrates okay so again i am repeating nitrates denitrate in the smooth muscle it will release nitric oxide this nitric oxide stimulate guanyl cyclase this guanyl cyclase increase uh, leads to the conversion of gtp to the uh, cgmp and thus the concentration of cgmp increases which further increase the conversion of myosin light chain phosphate to myosin light chain and thus uh, relaxation will occur and it will Uh, help in veno it will cause veno dilation arterial arterial dilation dilation of coronary and dilation of the coronary arteries so this this is the mechanism of nitrates next next class uh, calcium channel blockers so first of all as its name shows mechanism of action of calcium channel blocker means the drugs which uh, blocks the calcium channel so there are some channels uh, in the uh, cardiac cells so basically what happens when there is a signal of depolarization uh, it is sensitized by l type uh, l type voltage gated calcium channels and this l type voltage gated calcium channels get open okay and uh, when it get open when these channels get open it will allow the entry of calcium ion into the cardiac cells and this uh, and we have discussed that calcium is responsible for the contraction and when the cell calcium ion concentration increases it causes contraction so what does our calcium channel blocker do this uh, we have a only one choice we have to reduce the concentration of calcium over here so what we can do we can limit limit the release of calcium we cannot do that so what we can do we can block the gate okay so that no one can enter so we can block the l type channel blocker voltage gated channels we just block that gate so that calcium is no, calcium ion is not able to get into enter into the gate and the calcium ion concentration decreases and uh, which um, stimulates relaxation or which induces relaxation of the cardiac cell so how this calcium channel in normal routine what is happening depolarization or stimulus is over, uh, going there it um, it uh, it is sensitized by l type voltage gated calcium channel after that that calcium ion get enter into the cardiac cell and this calcium ion causes muscle to contract now what calcium channel blocker do what was what is our motive to decrease the calcium ion how this calcium ion will decrease if you if we uh, inhibit the entry so this entry is inhibited by calcium channel blocker and how do they block this calcium channel gated blockers this calcium channel blocker binds to alpha 1 sub units of l type calcium channel and inhibits calcium influx so our motive was to inhibit the entry of calcium ion and how does it is achieved the drug bind to the alpha 1 sub unit of the l type calcium channel and inhibits the calcium influx i think i'm clear now the next uh, category is beta adrenergic receptor antagonist so here a beta receptor adrenergic receptor antagonist uh, beta 1 mediated sympathomimetic action occurs on heart and juxta glomerular cells in kidney so these heart uh, when these mediated sympathomimetic action uh, act on heart they increase the cardiac contractibility and thus increases the heart rate and cardiac output okay and when they act beta mediated action act on juxta glomerular cells in kidney it will increase the 
uh, renin uh, release which causes increase in the angiotensin 2 and this increase the vasoconstriction. Now, what is happening over here? Due to beta 1 mediated sympathomimetic action, here heart rate increases, cardiac output incre heart rate increases and there is an increase in the vasoconstriction. Now, what would be our goal? Our goal is to block this. If we block this, uh, this uh, heart pay action will uh, increasing heart rate will get reduced and there is no constri vasoconstriction. Okay. So, how this beta adrenergic receptor antagonist works about? They block or they antagonize the beta 1 mediated sympathomimetic action on heart and juxtaglomerular cells in the kidney. So, I am repeating how the beta adrenergic receptor antagonist work. Beta adrenergic or beta blocker, uh, what we say beta blockers, they blocks or they stops, they antagonize the beta 1 mediated sympathomimetic action on heart and juxtaglomerular cells in the kidney. Next is, next category is mechanism of action of potassium channel opener. The example was Nicorendil. Okay. So, the potassium channel opener here in the last we have uh, closed the calcium channel. Here we, have, we want to open the potassium channel, why we are discussing here. So, here potassium channel openers, this, uh, this open potassium ATPase and this causes the enhancing of the potassium efflux. Means, these potassium channel openers open the potassium channel gates, which uh, stimulates the efflux ya fir bahar jana is usko bolte efflux of the potassium ions, which is causing membrane hyperpolarization. And due to hi membrane hyperpolarization, calcium ion get, uh, entry get decreased. We have discussed that due to increased concentration of calcium ion, it causes constriction. It means due to con uh, calcium is responsible for the contraction, and here due to membrane hy hyperpolarization, calcium ion entry get decreased, and it reduces the intracellular calcium. Means cell ke intracellular cell ke beech mein jo calcium hai, that ion getting reduced, and thus the smooth muscle get relaxed. So how this potassium channel opener works? Potassium channel openers open the potassium ATPase pump. Uh, channels and then uh, this enhances the potassium efflux and this uh, causes membrane hyper, hyperpolarization which in turn decreases the calcium entry and reduces the intracellular calcium which further helps to relax the smooth muscles. So, these are the categories and uh, these are the references which, uh, which are included which are studied for the um, compilation of this PPT. Thank you.